Hi, everybody. Russ on the West End Network. Hope you are all safe and well, my friends. If you're new in give it a like. Give it a comment. Give it a share. Give it a subscribe. All that good stuff. I, that that sort of that trailer of all the it's incredible and that's just only a small portion of the people that Tony had under the academy but anyway it's incredible I was just going through it all um we've got a very special guest on tonight his book his new autobiography is out now he's actually doing a book signing on Saturday 2 p.m at Newham Bookshop uh, bookstores old Viv over there is uh he's gonna be doing a book signing so make sure you check that out if you are in the vicinity it's on Saturday 2 p.m I believe but we'll bring the man himself in he's got a bit of a cro croaky face croaky face not croaky face croaky voice he was out last night so <laughs> but he's on his laptop now it's Tony Carr how are we doing Tony yeah good Russ thanks very much I apologize for the voice <laughs> but uh I'm also doing a book signing on Sunday before the Everton game. At, uh, Brilliant. At, at Foyles in Westfield. Brilliant. The, well, there we the, go. Yeah, you know, that's at 12 o'clock. So uh, anyone who's passing, going to the game, wants a signed book, pop in and uh, I'll oblige. Brilliant. Fantastic. So on Saturday, if you're out, if you're around the bowling area, the old bowling bookshop, good old Viv, that'll be fun. And if not, if you're in, if you're in Westfield on Sunday at Foyles, uh, 12 o'clock, all ready for the 2 o'clock. Oh, he's... Was I? Is it me? But I just I hate international breaks. What's it like for for you when you was working at the club and obviously international breaks? All this the kids going out to internationals and stuff like that. Yeah, Did you enjoy it, it? No, no, I didn't. It was unsettling. <laughs> yeah, because players like a routine. You know, going to train, going to play, going to train, going to play. You know, when you have a two week break, which in you know even one weekend internationals is a two week break basically. Mm. But they don't enjoy it. You know, training becomes slightly slightly um a bit more low-key because a lot of the players ain't there so it becomes just a ticking over exercise mm, mm. and uh no I, I personally didn't enjoy it i don't even enjoy it now as a no. supporter i miss the premier league and i miss the big games and i mean the two england games has just passed no disrespect to gareth and his team i didn't watch them because they, they had no meaning for me yeah it's so true. I was exactly the same. The only the only meaning for me is I just look at the. I don't really watch the games, but I watch. I'll, I'll read the sort of the, the review on the BBC website, and if if Dex on, um, he's been off. I have to go through and just check he hasn't got an injury or anything like yeah, that. Yeah. And then I'm like, yeah. okay, okay, okay. Yeah. So we're all right. But I totally agree. It's it's um. I thought with all these nations leagues and stuff like that, we weren't meant to have these meaningless games. But hey ho. No, exactly. Hey ho. It's crazy. It's crazy. Um. But as as everyone knows, you know, obviously, you've got the book coming out, Tony. What 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 after after so many years at West Ham? Um. Why why now? Why now? Well, I suppose it's the uh, the end of my time there. Yeah. And. Uh, I'd go out to dinner on a regular basis with family, friends. I would end up telling stories and, and, and I'd end up, you know, telling a story or two about my time, about players, about managers, quirks and stuff. And they, and they always used to say to me, that's a good story. You will write a book. Yeah. And uh, I thought, well, why not? So I started writing bits down on my computer and then uh, I started getting into it. And then I left it alone because I thought, well, I don't know what to write. I don't know yeah. what to write. And um, lockdown kicked in, and I picked it up again. And um, I got I got a, um, a publisher, Icon Books. Yeah, and they were very good to me, and they said, no, "Keep going, you know, it will come, stories will come." And uh, I had a brainwave to uh, speak to some of the players, Brilliant. the ex-players of mine, and. Uh, and to a man, they were so willing. It was mm. unbelievable. They were so so humble, so willing to, to just talk to me. So I went and visited them at whatever it was at their house. I met Mark Noble in a cafe in Brentwood. Um, okay. I went around Joe Cole's house. I went. Uh, I met Rio in the BT studios in Stratford, and so on. And, I went, uh, and, and, and my interview with Frank was in his last little bit of Derby. That's how long ago it was. So I went up to Derby, spent the day with them, watched training, had a bit of lunch. They were, they were all brilliant. Um, and Potsy, I visited them at the training ground. So they were all brilliant. And um, they, see, you know, they said good things, nice things. I will say, though, the book is all my work. All, every word is mine. Yeah. I had no, I had no ghostwriter. Totally. I had nobody saying, do this, write that, take that out, put that in. It, it's all my words. I had to take certain stuff out because... <laughs> It might have deemed controversial, 
<laughs> and, pub and publishers are very touchy about getting injunctions and delaying yep. publication. So I've sort of cleansed it a little bit the best I can. But it's, it's not that type of book. It's not a book about throwing brickbats about or criticising. And mm. I've said my piece. Um, and I've just stated the facts. But by and large, it's, um, it's about my life, how I grew up in the East End, how I started playing football, etc. So I started the book with my departure. Yeah. And then, and then said, right, this is where it all began. That was the end. This oh, is the beginning. Yeah, it's, it's like you get those in the, those um all those films, isn't it? Where it's like you, yeah. you, you see you see the person, mer you know, you see the thing at the yeah. end, and then you sort of work. You see backwards. the end before you see yeah. the end before the film. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you know the butler's done it, but then you've got to find yeah. out how he's done it. Yeah, I yeah. get you. And that, I mean, I mean, to be honest, Tony, I mean, remember when we, we spoke a while ago uh, when we did a, a My Hammers 11 and, you know, you went yeah. for your 11 and it was it was basically the World Cup 2010 squad, basically. Yeah. Um, and I remember because then I got, because I put it up and I said, oh, da, 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 da. And I, I listed a few of the names on Twitter like I do. And one of them was Anton. And Anton basically then sent me a, the most incredible message about how honored he was that you picked him in his and it, and it just epitomized me and it doesn't surprise me at all that everyone was so generous with their time and stuff for you tony because yeah. it, you know i mean you've i mean we just did that little show reel at the beginning um i mean it was i mean if we look at that sort of that golden era for example that 2010 world cup squad i think eight of them came from the academy or something like that um in terms of the likes of john terry and joe and carrick and defoe and obviously yeah. obviously jermaine just recently retired as well i think you know that's the last of that generation really isn't it he's he was still playing yeah. um yeah. But it was it's, it was a phenomenal period. But not a lot of people knew that. So we know, obviously, as you said, you were born in Bow, um, and then you was at West Ham for you as a youth team player, weren't you? Starting off yes. with, yes, in '66, wasn't it? '66, I think. '66, '66. I was a fifteen-year-old. Yeah, not a bad year. Something happened in '66. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. I have to have a look. I have to check the memories anyway. But I mean, yeah. obviously, you know, joining obviously from Bow. Joining West Ham as a as a, as a schoolboy, sixty six. Obviously, you know you've got the boys there as well. Um, it wasn't a bad time to start your West Ham career, really, was it? No, I, I was a West Ham fan anyway. I was a supporter, course, yeah. And uh, to be there with all those iconic players, not just Moorehurst Peters, but you know, you're talking Johnny Byrne and people like that, yeah. great players, Ronnie Boyce. Johnny Sissons was still there, all great players. And, um, you know, it was like a dream come true for me. I know it sounds like a cliche, but it was. It was, yeah. Because it they, been. Th they were my idols. They were my, I was their fan. And uh, yeah. to be amongst them and, and, and them days, John and Ron, Ron Greenwood and John Lyle, you know, we used to amalgamate all the youngsters with the seniors. So it, it wouldn't be unusual on certain days of the week. You'd be training, you'd be on the same group, group same group as these players. Wow. So that was um, re really, really uh, mind-boggling, really, for me. When I look back now and think, well, how lucky was I, you know? That's incredible. That's incredible. And, it, and there, there was this thing, I think, you know, and I've, I've interviewed obviously loads of ex-players and they speak about, you know, how particularly with John and Ron, you know, they were in, they encouraged them to train the younger group. I mean, we had, um, who did I interview? I think it was Slates. And Slates said from a year, from about 13 or 14, he had Ray Stewart turn up to his youth team games and stuff like that. And there was this sort of progression, wasn't it? Sort of the first team looking yeah. after the reserve team. And, he, and, and to be honest, and, and that, and there was, I think there was a, a period where, you know, obviously yourself had left and I think it went a little bit out of the way and that's all back to normal, it seems, in that respect, in yeah. terms of you've got Kenny, you've got Kevin, you've got Colton, you've got Jimmy, you've got all these West Ham ex-players and Potsy and various others in the setup now. And it just yeah. seems to... I, yeah, I think that's marvellous. I really, really do. I, I agree with you, Russ, that uh, after I left, you know, not, not no sour grapes, I no. just think we lost our way a little bit. I yeah. really, really do believe that. You know, time marches on. That's not sour grapes from my point of view because I wasn't there. But I just thought they tried to, they tried to do it differently. Yeah. But like a lot of people that's been at clubs for a long time, West Ham has got a uniqueness about it. Yeah. And I think that uniqueness about it is that camaraderie, that togetherness, that family um, togetherness that the club promoted and, and, and um, 
and produced with their team of coaches and staff and the, and the players. And you've said it yourself, you interview ex-players and they talk so fondly about those days. Oh, Even they all they do. Might have moved, they might have moved on to other clubs mm. because that they realised going to other clubs, how unique West Ham was or is. Yeah. Um, so, yes, I do believe that. But now, you know, as you say, Kevin Keane, Stevie Potts, Mark Robson, Kenny Brown, you know, Carlton's back there, Zavon Hines is doing yeah. a little bit, Elliot Ward's just gone back and doing he a has, little bit. Yeah, I saw that, yeah. So, yeah, no, it's, I think it's fantastic. I'm, I'm really chuffed, that, you know, they're, they're sort of, you know, and Kev said to me, he said, I'm going back to all the things we did when I was with you as a youth player. So we're going to go back and we're going to, we're going to, we're going to revisit all that and because t- the game moves on, but it's still the same game. Mm. So, mm. you know, I'm going to go back to all those basics and install all those basics in those young players, which is what I tried to do over the years. Mm. And I, it was like music to my ears, to be honest, to hear that from Kev. It was yeah. great. It was love. And uh, power to his elbow. Yeah, no, I, you're right. And it just seems that, I mean... It just seems like under this the new regime, we'll say, yeah, David Moyes 2.0, it just seems he, he's just gone back to basics and has brought together a team where, which, to be honest, it is reminiscent of sort of the, the sort of, I'd say, you know, maybe maybe the Harry Bonds era, you know, in terms of yeah. 92, 93 season, yeah. you know, that sort of yeah. period. And it's just like that now. And it just seems, yeah. and, and with all the with all the ex-players, is it, it, that sort of heralds back to the Lal era with, with, you know, sort of that yeah. sort of progression, boot room thing. It's just, it's amazing at the moment. And I think there's a reason why we played so well under lockdown, because you had such a, you didn't have 60,000 people screaming at you. You had just your team. And yeah. that was just so important. It was, um, it's I, incredible, I, man. I think there, Russ, is, you know, you've a good point there, I think. Made a good point. He, the people he's got behind him, David, he's got Stuart Pearce. Yeah. No, Billy McKinley. Who I know I know him a little bit, but I don't know him very well, but I know him. Yeah. He's got Paul Nevin. Yeah. All, all very down-to-earth people. And he's cut out the bullshit. Yeah. It's no nonsense. This no, is what true. you do. This, yeah. This is what you do. You know, I think one of the first thing he, he did when he came into the club, he brought up all the um, statistics and mm. the analytics yeah. in terms of their running, their running stats. Yeah. And we were down the bottom. Our running stats were, were poor. And he said, until we start getting up the running league, we're always going to be at the bottom of the league mm. because we've got talent. But if you don't work hard, run about, and chase, and do, do all the horrible things, if you like, so he cut, he cut the bullshit and said, no, it's not about tactical. It's not about this. And obviously he's tactically astute anyway. Mm. And, and, and with Piercy, Stuart Pierce, who I know very well, you know, he ain't going to, he ain't going to have any nonsense. If people ain't doing it, they're going to tell him. Yeah. And, and I think you can see that on the pitch in the last couple of years. Oh, definitely. You definitely. And it's, and it's refreshing. It is really refreshing. It's refreshing to have a, have a side now, which, as you said, which will, which, you know, are going to put a shift in. It's not hard to, it's not hard to win over the West Ham fans. It really isn't no, as no. a player. No, you no. put a shift in and you try it. And you, you know, as you said, the first thing Moisey did was, did was, you know, he sent off Anderson, he sent off Haller, you know, he got rid of, he moved out all the players that were part of maybe a different regime and brought in players like Bowen, like Suchek, who, you know, just going to be, fighting for the shirt and that's what we want does not it it's not yeah. hard uh, no, as, just, as, just working their socks off yeah. yeah as Gatesy said hard work beats talent when talent does not work hard very good 100 percent, 100 percent, Gatesy 100 he, he, well he said he better than i did <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna nick that for his next book don't worry for the next coaching manual don't worry about that <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna nick that <laughs> So sc- get a screenshot that for later. He knows yeah. all about the computers now. Um, so obviously, you know, so you start, as I said, for a lot of people, you know, they, they know he's Mr. Academy. But as you said, you know, you start, you know, you start with the youth team, got into the reserve teams. Then you got, then you got injured um, uh, after he was, he went for Barnet for a little bit. I was at Barnet for a season, yeah. And that was, a, that was a disaster from my point of view. <laughs> it wasn't the right club. They, 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 they were good to me. They weren't a problem. They weren't the right club and I wasn't the right player for them. Yeah. And they'd, saw me without even, without even watching me play. And that was a mistake because I was trying to replace a centre forward they'd sold to, to Hereford, a guy named Billy Meadows, who famously um, upset Bobby Moore in that Hereford West Ham FA Cup. Uh, and they got a replay at Upton Park and West yeah. Ham beat them. But certainly um, 
I, I was never going to be a Billy Meadows. And uh, it just didn't work out. And I went and played up the next season. I didn't have a club. And I went and played for my friend's team in Leighton. And uh, just to keep fit, just to, yeah. while I was trying to find out what I'm going to do. And um, I broke my leg playing for him. And it was uh, it was a massive a massive turning point for me, you know, because I had to choose a, what road what road mm-hmm. do I go down now? Do I chase a football career where I'm never going to be at the top now? I'm never going to mm-hmm. be a top player, or do I ch- choose a coaching career that I'd already started working in the schools? Yeah, and um, I thought I'm enjoying the coaching more or that, more than I am playing the game. Because I'd fall out of love with playing the game a little bit. Sure. Not out of the game itself, but out of playing the game. Professionally, and, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so I chose the coaching career. And um, f- fortunately, luck, fate, whatever you might call it, I got a call out of the blue. Within three months, I got a call out of the blue from John Lyle. Would, would I come back as a part-time coach? John Dick had left. You mean, I don't know if you remember yeah, me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ex-Scottish International, well, who yeah. I'd known because he was working at Fairlop Sports Centre at Oakfield in uh, Hainal. <laughs> and we used to go to every morning with, with our school. And yeah. um, he used to come and assist us with the kids. So I knew John and we, we, we were good mates. So whether he put a word in for me because he was leaving, I don't know. I never know that. I never, I never did find that out. But um, John rang me. I went and the, the rest is history, as they say. Yeah. I went there in 73 and stayed there for 43 years. It's crazy. So, yeah, I think I chose the right path. I think you put, yeah, I think you, I think you bloody well did, yeah. yeah. And also, I thought I remember when we, when, when we when we spoke about before, when we spoke about when we spoke first time, you mentioned that your first age group wasn't an official West Ham age group. It was was it no, East Ham right. Boys, wasn't it, or Barking Pop, Pop, Boys? Popular Boys, Popular Club. Boys. That was it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and because then, it, technically, it yeah, it was Curbs, Paul Brush, That's it. Uh, Pat Creasy, who sadly died, Pat, in a car crash. Uh, when he was only about 19 something like that very, very sad uh on the 127 and um but brushy and uh curbs were the two players that went on in their great careers you know that's amazing isn't it so all the way from from paul brush and curbs all the way to so who would have been the last group you was it was it, would deck be in the last group he was in well of the last group that i signed and uh, mm. not necessarily the ones i, I coached yeah because in the last couple of years, even though I was, you know, the academy director, mm. I always coached the under 18s, but I was slowly passing that on because the game was changing with yeah. academies, with the new EEP, the elite player performance plan. And um, so I was relinquishing control of the 18s a little bit, giving it yeah. to Mark Phillips and uh, a guy named name escapes me for the minute i do know him very very well i'll, I'll come back i'll come back to it and um so but i suppose i signed declan rice i'd signed ben johnson was already in the system yeah. grady diagana i'd coached and worked with he was mm. already in the system who we sold to west brom mm. reese oxford i'd worked with and, and signed he was already in the system mm. so when i left you know there was all, already players that hadn't quite matured yet not mm-hmm. quite, you know, they hadn't broke into the team yet, but they were in the system. And um, it was ironic that, you know, when, when they sacked me, they said, you ain't produced any players lately. And that was one of the reasons they sacked me. So there you go. That's life. Yeah. Oh, well, <laughs> just, and then you've just produced England's best midfielder at the moment and one of the best in the Premier League, probably one of the best yeah. in the world at the moment yeah. in terms of... West Ham's most, you... yeah, West Ham's most valuable player. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully we'll never find out, Tony. No, no. Hopefully no. we'll never find out. What? Does, what, what, what see. <laughs> does it make you proud when you see, like, when you when you saw players, it, not who obviously you know, West Ham would a lot of them would go elsewhere, Rio and Frank, but obviously seeing the careers they had, does that all, does that fill you with a lot of pride? The fact is, you started that journey for them. Oh, my immense, immense pride, yeah, immense mm. pride. And what 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 um, I get a great amount of pleasure about is that, that, that they've stayed humble, mm. all of them. Mm. I think there's two a man, there's not one, they just go, oh, he's a flash so-and-so, or he's, yeah. he's got carried away with his success, or money's gone to his head. You know, I could never say that about them boys. 
I've yeah. called them boys, but you know, they're grown men now. But they are but to you. It's, it's, it, yeah, they're, and they're probably, yeah. uh, you know, and, yeah. and they probably still call you coach. It's like when you see a yeah. teacher, I, I still call them, you know, yeah, Miss, sir, Mr. Yeah. Mr. Sir. You know, it's, you yeah. know, the fact is, I'm probably about twenty years younger, thirty years younger than, but I still call them sir. And I'm, you know, forty years old. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's as I said, it's just, you know, for, you can imagine, you know, and people can go back and look from, you know, everyone from Paul Brush and and, and Curbs all the way up to Declan, say, for example, Ben Johnson, because Ben Johnson's a, a yeah. slightly later bloomer yeah, then. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't claim the fact that I coached Declan Rice and I made Declan no. Rice because you know he had his formative years at Chelsea. He did, yeah. And um, he came to Chelsea, released him. They didn't think there was anything there, so they released him. I watched him. At, and I thought, this kid's got something. Yeah. And uh, I could see it, just the way his manner, uh, the way he looked you in the eye, the way he the way he approached training, the way he wanted the ball all the time. Mm. And coming from Chelsea, you knew he was going to be technically quite good anyway. You know, he'd have a good background, good pedigree. Mm. And so basically, we as a club, and, and the scout that brought him to my attention, Dave Hunt, we... Uh, we set him on the path and he's done the rest. So I'm yeah. not going to take great credit for that. But all I would say was I signed him under my tenure as the Academy director. So exactly. You know, so, so, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I know what you mean. I remember, I remember seeing him from quite a young age in the kit in, I think it was the 18s or the 23s and someone like Declan, you, you, you had, he had that, it, it, it was almost it was almost like John Terry esque persona about him in terms of he was playing centre back, but he just seemed and that's such a rare quality having that sort of leadership. He just yeah. seemed to be a leader, and so it was it was yes, inevitable yes. when he came to West Ham. He was you know moved away, and you know potentially Gareth said you know he's no doubt he's going to be an England captain one day. So yeah. that's not oh, bad. No, he undoubtedly he's got those qualities. He's got leadership mm. qualities. You saw that early on. Yeah, a little bit Mark Noble when you first saw Mark Noble yes. as a twelve year old. You know, he was bossing everybody about even older players, telling them what to do. You know, he had no fear, wanted the ball, had no fear. Told people if they did things wrong, get that right, come on, do it properly. You know, that was Mark, you know, and he's still that he's still that way now. Yeah, and obviously even, come, even he's coming towards the end. He is, isn't it? He is. It's it's uh yeah, not a few I was doing I was doing something the other day and um I'm putting together a, a show about I've done it before actually, but I've sort of doing it as one big show, is how many players he's played with. Uh, West Ham and it's yeah. over it's over 200 players um okay. yeah it's crazy it's absolutely crazy speaking of Mark um what was it like bringing Nobes through as a as a as a youngster is it from 12 years old yeah. as you said he's a mouthy little sod by the sounds of it yeah in in the right way not, yeah. not saucy you know not cheeky not saucy well, not like an inch you would try to quip it yeah you know no steady <laughs> inch you know but uh, no, with Mark, it was always in, done in the right way. Yeah. But he, he was a pleasure to work with, pleasure to coach, pleasure to work with. Always got on with a job. But he wouldn't be afraid to tell you if he, if things were going not quite right. Yeah. Or and you told him to do something, or the team to do something, he'd, he'd sort of go, "Tell him that ain't working, that ain't working." You know, <laughs> we've got to change that. You know, because he'd be looking at it from his point. He's on the pitch. He's seeing what's happening. Yeah. And, and you would respect that. It may not have always been right, but you would have res you respect his his observations and and mm. his and his confidence to you know say that to the coach. And yeah. I had no problem with that, not at all. You know, I, there was no there's no you know him and me. I'm I'm the boss. You do as you're told. No, there's yeah. none of that. There's yeah. none. There's never any of that. What's that? Other than if someone really steps out of line, of course, then you have to slap him back down again. I'm you know, sure. In the right I'm, way. I'm sure. Not literally. I'm, I'm... <laughs> Yeah, don't say that, Christ. No. Yeah, not literally. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, Your Honour. Um, <laughs> well, obviously, yeah. Mark. Obviously, obviously, Mark. Mark retiring at the end of the season. You know, five hundred six odd, odd games, eighteen years playing first team at West Ham. What do you think he should do next? Well, that's for that's for Mark to say. Uh, but yeah. uh, I think he's got so much to offer. Yeah. Whether it's in coaching, whether it's in mentoring younger coaches. Or younger players, just to have him around the place. I think mm. West Ham would be—I'm sure they won't—but West Ham would be silly just to let him retire and drift off into yeah, one or two of the businesses he, he's got. You know, he's got going. Yeah, I know he's, I know he's, he's into property a bit, but uh, um, now when I spoke to him and interviewed him for the book, he, you know, he said that he'd he'd like to get involved in some way with coaching, but he didn't know specifically what mm, yeah so um 
now that we're waiting to see it, you know how he um, how that pans out. Yeah, no, it'd be, it'd be interesting. I, I, I think with, I think with this current regime, I think I, you know, and you said the, the likely, uh, the fact that we've got so many ex players in the system, um, I think yeah, it, the hill. I always, I see him as like it. I could see him as because obviously, as you said, he, he's got the football side, but I'd like to see him sort of. You know, by the sounds of it, he was saying he wants to like, like be involved in the future of West Ham, and yeah. and so if, for me, it's either it's either a similar role to you to you maybe yeah, you yeah. did, or maybe more of a you know director football role sporting. But then he hasn't got the business acumen just yet because no, no. it's different. So yeah. it's I think he'd, I could I could see him maybe starting off doing something sort of recruitmenty, understanding the system, and then. I don't know. I don't know. So I'm not. I'm not putting words in his mouth. No, but it's I mean, going to be an emotional day. It's you know. <laughs> it's for the club to decide. And the, yeah, you know, Ricky Martin, who's now running the academy, uh, you know, Ricky to, to sort of suggest where he could best fit in. So yeah, you know, there's discussions to be had, and let's wait and see. Yeah, we'll wait and see. It's going to be a. It's going to be a dry eye but in the I'm, house. But I'm sure he'll stay. Oh yeah, I've no doubt. Yeah. I've no doubt. I've no doubt. Right, let's get some questions because right. Uh, thanks for doing. Thanks for this and doing incredible work with your time at West Ham. Which player were you most impressed by who didn't make it? There must have been. Obviously, we spoke about Rio and Frank and people like that and all these guys that made it. There must have been someone you thought this guy's got something and he didn't make it, or maybe not to the extent that you thought he'd do. No, I think you know one or two spring to mind, but Lee Odges is a good shout. Really, yeah, I love Odge. Yeah, <coughs> and Odge is was a fantastic player. Yeah. Only small in stature, but mm. what a great player. Great feet, great turn of pace, had an eye for a goal, but got, from a very early age, got dogged down, dogged by injuries to his knees. Mm. Yeah. And he's, you know, he's still got dodgy knees to this day, but uh, he's one that you'd have thought he's going to make it, this kid. I think if it had stayed injury free, I don't think there'd have been any doubt. So he mm. was a massive disappointment not to have gone on and done more, really. Um, and it wasn't his own fault because he had the attitude, he yeah. had the ability, he had the passion, he loved the game, loved West Ham, uh, big mates with Frank. You know, yeah. when I interviewed Frank Lampard, that is, um, he said that at 15 years of age, he, he was nowhere near the best player in the team. He said mm. Lee Hodges was better than me. Yeah. And he was right. Mm. He was right. Hodge was a great player. So mm. Hodge was the standout, really, for me, the one that really should have and through no fault of his own didn't go no. all the way really yeah yeah but i mean as obviously we've had, we've had hodgy on and we've spoken about that you know it was part of a uh, actually it, was, it wasn't intentional but we interviewed hodgy izzy and we interviewed newts literally like one after each right. other so yeah. and all of them you know took a decision to they could have carried on and and maybe been a squad bit player or drop down divisions and have careers at Scunthorpe yeah. and Swansea and yeah. you know and so yeah but as you said because they they love they love the game they love, they yeah. wanted to be involved in the first team but yeah um yeah I know exactly what you mean about Hodgie um right well, we got uh, oh, a, a nice one thank you for your years of dedication and service to West Ham there's a lot of them in here Tony so. thank you <laughs> right okay um as a true Cockney what's your go to pie and mash ah. Important questions. <laughs> well, as I, I, I lived for a good few years in Billericay, and yeah. I'm now, I'm now, I've left Billericay about five years ago now, and um, I, I, I still go to a pub in Stock, which is outside Billericay. Yeah, and uh, we go there on a Thursday or a Friday night, and they do Maureen's pie and mash and liquor, and Maureen's of poplar, Maureen's of poplar yeah. pie and mash and liquor. So it's an old East End. I think they haven't been ported in. And uh, so Imp- 10 95 double pie mash and liquor, it's lovely. <laughs> Imported so, yeah. in from Eastland, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Imported in from Poplar <laughs> to, to Billericay. It's, it's not exactly yeah. across, like you know, from China no, to us. No, no, it's not nation to nation, but it's uh, you know, well, I'll tell you what, crossing that border, mash, isn't it? No, no it's yeah. no, no, that's where I get my pie mash fix. Yeah, 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 yeah. There we go. It's, there's the one we do one silly question in there. Um, which, uh, which, which academy graduate achieved more in their career? Oh, that's okay. So, so from from a different perspective, anyone yeah. in anyone you thought actually they were all right, but they've gone into had a, a better career than you thought they would do. Yeah, one or two. I mean, I, I wouldn't have dreamed Glenn Johnson would have hit the heights he hit. Yeah, and you know, it's testament to him as an individual, as a player, his dedication, his his uh, desire, 
Um, you couldn't you couldn't have said at fifteen, Frank Lampard was going to have the career he had. Yeah, and I'll put my hands up and I'll say, whatever he's achieved, I admire him immensely. I know West Ham fans have got a love hate with him a little bit. Well, he'll be there on Wednesday, be there on yeah. Sunday, won't he? Yeah, he'll be there Sunday, and I hope they give him a decent reception. I wouldn't think everyone will be uh, clapping him, but I think, oh, they should because even. Though, even now, I think he's still West Ham for and for a little bit. I really, really, even though he's his love of Chelsea because of his career there, yeah. he's still got he's still got a soft spot for us. He really has. I, I shouldn't let that out, but he has really. Oh, it might and, be funny. Uh, his dad, isn't it? So you got his dad yes, as well. His dad, and, and you know, you you read his book, and he said the only ever thing he ever wanted to do when he was a youngster was play for West Ham. Yeah. So, you know, Frank's achieved um, unbelievable things. That you would you you could never have predicted at fifteen. You always thought he'd be a good player, mm. and, and maybe get some games in the first team. But to go on and do what he did, unbelievable, unbelievable. So yeah. players do surprise you in terms mm. of what they can achieve because you know Glenn Johnson had only just broken into West Ham's first team through Glenn Roder, who was struggling for injuries who, in that ill-fated year. Really? Yeah. You know, he collapsed and had the brain tumour. Mm. We eventually got relegated. Trevor yeah. took over, but we just missed out on 42 points uh, and got relegated. But in the sort of February time, he was struggling with injuries. And Glenn said to me, Glenn Roder said to me, I'm struggling with this week for a right back. Do you think Glenn Johnson could do the job? So I said, Glenn, and my words were exact, was Glenn, you'll never know until you put him in. So mm. he put him in. And in a struggling team, if fans can remember that, he was a revelation. Yeah, he was. He, yeah. he played with a, an innocence, a freshness, mm. you know, a, a, youth, a youthful enthusiasm up and down the line. He's always had great pace. Great pace, you know, big and st strong, not particularly tall, but yeah. stocky and strong. And he was up and down that line as a right back. And... Uh, Although he wasn't big, he used to play centre back for the youth team quite a bit because he had great spring, mm. you know, could jump. Um, so, yeah, Glenn Johnson, and then he went to Chelsea after only about fourteen games, something like yeah. games, something yeah, silly. Yeah. And you know, maybe if he hadn't have had that movie, he may not have gone on done the things he did. I don't know. Who knows? But he's took that opportunity, played with better players, obviously, and has matured, learned, got better, gone to Liverpool, played for England. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. So yeah, yeah and, until they until you put them in, you never know what they can do. Very true. Very true. Very true. And you said, yeah, you know, I mean, the slight parallels. I think with Ben Johnson as well. In terms of, I know that that um, Lee Carsley, the under twenty three, under twenty one, England twenty one boss said he, you know, he because there's so many right backs in the under twenty one squad and in England, you know, it's like yeah, it's going to yeah. be difficult for Ben. You know, even yeah. in even in the under twenty threes, he had um Vera uh, Mento from Southampton. He had um, who else? There was there was three. He had three of them in there, so he might have to play centre back to to yeah. get show versatility yeah. i mean he does show great versatility at west ham and he can play left back as well and that's all that's always important right okay let's get some nice questions what we got here? uh uh what one piece of advice would you give an aspiring footballer keep your feet grounded keep grounded yeah work hard and make football your passion so it's what you love to do don't do it because there might be a, a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow in other words you're going to become a top player and earn loads of money. Do yeah. it because you love the game. And if you're good enough, those rewards come anyway. So just work really hard at what at your game. Mm. Improve what you're good at. Not just improve your weaknesses. Improve what you're good at. Mm. Make yourself better at what you're good at. And, and chip away at those things you could do better. Yeah, but don't forget the things you do well and improve those as well. Do you know but, what? Shaka said almost exactly the same thing. It was like really? basically improve the thing. He goes, yeah, improve the things that you're not good at, but always finish on the things you're good at. Yeah. So you always finish on a high at a session. I was like, and you said exactly the same. It's the West Ham way. You see, it's all it's yeah. it's it's just through osmosis. Um, yeah. right. Uh, one. Okay, let's talk about this. Uh, obviously, the nineteen ninety nine FA Youth Cup. Obviously, we, it was it was an incredible night. Obviously, we had God knows we had to keep over the stands and there's people all over it. Yeah. Was it your proudest moment at West Ham? If not, what was? 
I think with the team, that was one of the proudest moments yeah. because of the occasion, the FA Youth Cup, which is a prodigious, prodigious. Is that yeah. right? Yeah. Well, it doesn't, um, I know what you mean. <laughs> you know, competition at youth level. Yeah. And to get to the final and win it as emphatically as we did, 9 0 was still a record aggregate yeah. score. Yeah. And the crowd, that's what stood out for me. The crowd on the night, it's like a, it was a full house, basically. It was, yeah. And, uh, you know, the way they got behind the team and were singing and, you know, cheering, it was, it was just fantastic. And that drove the players mm. and that lifted, to, lifted the players to the performance that they put on because it, it was a fantastic performance. And another proud moment for me, and it's not as prodigious, was at uh, Chelsea. It was at Stamford Bridge. It was a, it was a, a, a South East Counties League Cup final yeah. in the mid, mid uh, early 90s. And it was a two-leg final. And at Upton Bar, we lost 5-2 at home to Chelsea. So I had to go to Stanford Bridge the following week and uh, try and get a result. And um, in the first minute of the game, they scored. It was 6-2 down on aggregate. And I thought, this is going to be a long night. Yeah. And it was Rio Ferdinand. I played in midfield. He was a schoolboy. And it was the making, it was the making of him. He was unbelievable. His performance was unbelievable. And we scored a goal, made it 6-3. Scored just for half-time, made it 6-4. I come in at half-time, we've got a chance here. They think they've already won it, Chelsea. Now, come on, let's try and get a goal in the first 20 minutes. Come on, let's really take the game to We've got nothing yeah. to lose. Let's take the game to Chelsea and get 6-5. And let's really, really, really make them nervous. That's what we've done. 6-4, 6-5. And about three minutes before the end of the game, 6-6. Scored again and um, went into extra time. No more goals in extra time. <laughs> and we won it on penalties. Amazing. And the winning penalty was scored by Frank Lampard in the shed end at Chelsea. <laughs> you know, and it's perfect that he ended up being a hero of Chelsea. And he scored the winning goal for us at Stamford Bridge to win West to win West Ham the League, the League Cup. Brilliant. And... Uh, that was a great, great night. A really, really not as prodigious as the FA Youth Cup, yeah. but it was a great, great night. Yeah, and, it, and it. it was the it was the dawning of Lampard, Odges, mm. Ferdinand. It was the dawning of these players really breaking through and becoming the players they become. Yeah. And in Odges' case, is what he could have become. But yeah. He was good enough. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I love it. I love it. Yeah, he talks to Jimmy Walker and he saved the penalty from Frank Lampard at the shed end as well. He doesn't, doesn't, oh, like, to talk, he? doesn't like to talk about it, though. He doesn't like to talk about it. Oh, Jim, oh, I'll talk about Jimmy. He'll tell you. Yeah, you know, he loves talking about himself, Jim. Well, he's back there now, isn't he? He's back yeah, there as a yeah. goalkeeper, goalkeeper consultant. What, what, what yeah, is that? Yeah, because Jerome left and um, yeah. they've just filled him into the end of the season to see how he gets on, I think. Yeah, he's loving it. Absolutely loving it. Uh, happy America. Can I just say, absolutely love the loyalty you've shown to Amazon dec over the decades of commitment and hard work. Lovely. Thank you. Thank Lovely, you happy. There we go. Yeah, she you. Good luck. She's here. Um, what did you make of John Terry joining Chelsea from West Ham? Did you expect him to be as good as he was? No. <laughs> the truth. Yeah. We wanted to keep him. Yeah. Don't, don't get me wrong. He wasn't, he wasn't happy he left. We, we wanted to keep it, but it was in the days where registration and uh, was different. It, you had, it was a yearly registration. Sure, it was what yeah, they yeah. call the old centres of excellence rather than the academy system. Yeah, and, uh, and my mistake, our mistake, not necessarily mine alone, but our mistake as a as a department, the academy, youth department, we let John go off for the summer with all the other players without signing before they left for the following season. So Chelsea, they used that to their advantage and enticed yeah. him to, to Chelsea. And uh, he was a midfield player for us, John. Um, and he was a midfield player when he signed for Chelsea. And even when he was a youth team player under 18s, he was still a, he was still a, a, a central midfield player. Yeah. And by chance, by someone got injured and he went, he went played at the back. I don't know exactly how it happened, 
the rest is history and he's had a fantastic career. Yeah. But I would say, I would say about John, he's much maligned at times. That whenever I speak to him, very humble guy. And when I asked him, if, would he play my testimonial as an ex hammer? Yeah. I sort yeah. of said it a little bit tongue in cheek. Would you come play my testimonial, John, as an ex hammer? He looked at me a little bit funny at first, laughed. He went, Of course I will. He said, What sort of reception do you think I'll get? <laughs> I said, No, it won't be a problem. They'll love it. And I thought, well, hold on a minute. It might not. But yeah, so yeah, he was happy to come along. Yeah. And about your testimonial, obviously, you know, it was an amazing night. You know, all these all these players, all these ex-players, as you said, Frank and um and uh, and John and stuff like that turning out for West Ham. You know, it was a it was an incredible night. Yeah, as 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 it was about you, did you enjoy it or was it like a bit humble? Was it you know, uh, it, you know it, it, weird? It, went, it went by in a flash. Yeah. I loved it and I was nervous about how many people would turn up. Would, would anyone turn up? You know, you never know these things. You know, I thought, you know, you know 50 blokes and their dogs or women and their dogs. <laughs> I thought, oh, oh, who knows? But, you know, I had nearly 14,000, so I was absolutely chuffed about that for yeah. stars. And uh, the story was that um, Paolo Di Canio was the story for me a little bit. Because yeah. all the other lads, I didn't think I'd have enough players to come back and play. But... I had too many. They all wanted to come back and play, all of them. And I had players with me. I'm like, can I come and play? Can I come and play? And oh, I thought, oh, Christ, you know, how am I going to get them on the pitch? And um, Paolo come, and, and I asked him, I thought, if I asked Paolo Di Canio to come as more one, because every player was an academy player, ex-academy yeah. player. But Paolo, I thought, as a guest, might just put, a, you know, a few bums on the seats and uh, people come watch Paolo play. And uh, he was living in Rome, and I said, I'll pay your expenses to come over yeah, and uh, put you up in a hotel for the night. And he went, no, 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 no. I'll take no money. I'll take no money. I'm trying to do an Italian accent in Bob. <laughs> well, yeah. He said, no, 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 I'll take no money. And uh, he said, I'll play half a game. Paolo, just go out there for 10 minutes. Don't worry. So he starts the game, plays half a game. We come in at half time, and... Um, Paolo, off you come. And Gary Alexander, who was a Millwall player then, yeah. said, Gal, you're coming on now. Um, you know, Gary, young Gary was didn't play many games at West Ham, but played in the non, uh, lower leagues, called sort of loads and loads, loads of goals. Loads, yeah. And uh, was, a, was a good lad. And Paolo went, no, 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 no. Tony, I play 10 more minutes. <laughs> I said, I thought you wanted to come off. I'm, no, 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 I'll play 10 more minutes. He said, I want the adulation of the crowd when I come off. <laughs> That's what he said to me. So <laughs> 10 minutes goes by, you call him off, and all the crowd are going, Paolo, dear, can he? Oh, Paolo. And he, oh, he loved it. He came up to me, and I've got a picture of him. Come off the pitch, give me a big hug. And he whispered in my ear, thank you for this wonderful experience. And that's Paolo. It's so emotional. Yeah. Love him. Love so him. It, was a, it, was a, it was a lovely moment for me. Yeah. Yeah. I've got a lovely picture someone snapped. Paolo, give me a big hug. Yeah. Oh, I love it. I love it. Yeah, he's just. Yeah, I remember you telling that story last time. I, I oh, right, sorry. So, oh, no, sorry. No, 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 yeah. no, 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 because because a lot of people haven't seen it. Haven't seen it, but it was absolutely brilliant. Yeah, yeah, love it. Right. Okay, let's get some more questions. Why don't we hang on to Tony Adams? Says Pot. Says Pat Yeah. Malone. <laughs> yeah. This. Oh. Yeah. You, it's, it's a question you'd have to ask Tony, but I, I mean, Steve Potts and Tony Adams played for the same Barking District team together as centre backs. Yeah. Um, Steve was West Ham through and through. So there wasn't any, he just said, where's the form I want to sign? So it wasn't a problem. With Tony, he was training at West Ham and training at Arsenal. Yeah. You know, bearing in mind that these kids are 13 years old, he felt the training at Arsenal was more professional than the training at West Ham. Now, I don't know what he meant by that. <laughs> because, you know, that, the training, you know, the, the, the program that I used to set, you know, did stop any future f internationals fulfilling no, their dreams. No, no, did all right, yeah. So, and it was, our, our training was a mixture of fun with a serious edge because you're, you're coaching possibly future players. Mm. But without the fun element, I don't think young players will express themselves as readily there's a time for the more discipline and the more hardened professional approach a bit later on down the line. 
Mm. But I think the first thing you've got to do is make the kids love the game, enjoy the game, enjoy the training with a serious edge and an element to it. So I don't know, was we right, was we wrong? But Tony felt, no, I'm signing for Arsenal. And he had a great career. And I, I still see him today. I bump into him occasionally. And we talk with chat. He's a, he's a good guy, Tony. He's, he's yeah. down, down to earth. He's had right. his troubles, but he's down to earth guy. He didn't do bad, did he? Did all right. Did all right. Yeah. Did all right. Right. Okay, what we got? Um, now, actually, this one's this is quite pertinent because he, he he was did an interview, actually, today. What was Reese? What was Reese Oxford really like as a as a player? Yeah, difficult to answer yeah. that one because uh, I I always because I left I was rel- my I relinquished my role in about fourteen fifteen season, but I stayed on for a little bit longer as um, academy ambassador. Yeah, because Karen wanted me to stay. Karen Brady mm-hmm. wanted me to stay. And I wanted to stay. It was my club. I love the club. Yeah, still course. do. It, and uh, I wanted to stay. So I thought I would, I would help the new guy Terry Wesley settle in. I'd, and I'd said to him, "If I'm a shadow on your shoulder, you know, I'll, I'll keep my distance. If I'm, yeah. a, if I'm something that you keep looking at and you keep reminding, I keep reminding you of the past. I'll keep my distance." And he went, "No, no, no. I want your advice. I want this and that, the other." And he saw Reese Oxford play. And we always thought Reese was talented, mm. good player, good potential. And without telling any secrets or stories, Terry said to me, he's the best player I've ever, ever seen. Mm. And I went, Terry, don't, you know, don't get carried away with that, mate. I said, if I put it into perspective, he's not as good as Rio was at the same age. Yeah. So just put it into perspective. We, we like Reese and we think he's a good, good player. I said, but he's not as good as Rio was. So, you know, tread carefully. Mm. And I think uh, and I think he raised him to a status too early. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, but having said that, he did grab that opportunity as being promoted, being pushed on. Mm. And um, I tried to negotiate his first contract with his agent, Reese, And... Um, the agent was more concerned with what the terms of his contract, shall we say, you can, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Rather than what as a club we can do for him yeah. in terms of, you know, will he get an opportunity? Will he get in the first team? Gotcha. You know, will he be fast tracked? Mm-hmm. Cause that's, that's what you want to hear. Yeah. Not we're going to give you this. We're going to give you that. We're going to give you that. We're going to give you this. And, and, and we always, we, we think you're, you know, this, that, and the other. Mm. Now, and I think his agent and Reese, they just got a little bit carried away with, you know, the status he was being portrayed as. He got into the first team, to be yep. fair. Yeah. Slavin put him in the team against Arsenal at uh, the Emirates. And he, he did terrific. Yeah, he did. He did terrific. But do you remember his second game against Bournemouth at home in the next Saturday? Wasn't he taken off, wasn't he? He was, he was, he was, at, he, he looked out of his depth. Yeah, yeah. And um, so, and, and he subbed him at half time. And I think um, it, what it showed was he's got the potential to do what he showed at the Emirates, but he wasn't quite ready to be there every week and do it. So he, he was still learning the game. He was still learning the game. And, and, and you know, I'd, I'd, relinqu- I'd relinquish control at this point. Yeah. So I don't know whether it was, he was, he was praised too early, if that's the right term, or uh, yeah, put, I can put, put, put into a, mm. you know, you're this, you're that, you're great, and this agent saying, "Well, I can get this for you, I can do that for you." Mm. So, like I've said, with so many players, stay grounded, work hard, yeah, but do good, work at what you're good at, and get better at it, you know, and be the best you can be, and mm. then all that other stuff comes comes a bit later on. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Makes perfect sense. Yeah, so yeah. you know, and he lost his way a little bit, unfortunately. Yeah. Well, he seems to, you know, he seems to be doing quite well in the in the Bundesliga at the moment. So yeah, could Perhaps he needed that. Perhaps he needed to go away and yeah, come away from the pressures of uh, uh, of life in the Premier League and resurrect well, we did, himself. 
there's obviously there's loads you know we had obviously Jude Bellingham over the in Bundesliga we had obviously you got Reese over there you know we had this sort of conveyor belt of of English talent go over to the Bundesliga to Dortmunds and, and various others so it might be as you said I mean Jude Belling Jude Bellingham he was obviously at Birmingham and everyone Man United were looking at him and da, 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 and he goes to Germany as you said maybe to get out of the public eye maybe because obviously as you said yeah. I mean I mean we look at look at Joe for example you know. Joe, I mean, I knew about Joe when he was 13 and I was the same yeah. age. And you, so, you know, we do sort of jump on. And I remember we signed him on the pitch against Chelsea. I remember it was yeah. against Chelsea as well. Yeah. Um, so maybe some players just don't work well with that attention. I have to, I have to say, oh, while I was there working with him, I never had a day's problem with him. Yeah. I, I really, I found him a good kid. Worked hard. Uh, needed to be pushed a little bit sometimes. Needed to be pushed, you know, to get the maximum out of him. Mm. But uh, he was a good kid and a good listener and he wasn't a problem. But, you know, sometimes they lose their way. And yeah, yeah. I get that. Maybe it's the people that advise them. Maybe it's the people that's constantly telling them they're a great player when they've still got loads to learn. And I don't yeah. know. Yeah. You see, you see that even with players now. Like, you know, oh, look, yeah. at, look, look at Payet, for example, and yeah. Arnautovic. And, you know, if they, I mean... And out of which his brother was the agent, and you know, and so as you said, it's it's the people they have around as well. I mean, yeah, I yeah. mean, that's why I think it's quite refreshing how Dex got his family as his agent because I think, I think more, more very wise. I think more and more people wise. are doing that now, aren't they? Because yeah. they've got their backs, and it's not about the money; it's about them as a person now. That's for sure. And I think that's that's a relevant point because not Reese, but all players that sometimes can be careful that the agent isn't trying to push a deal or do a deal because he's going to get more out of it now yeah. if it's your parent or your brother doing it exactly it, they're doing it f for the benefit for you not mm. what they're going to get out of it yeah and i think that's key yeah totally agree uh a few more uh under what manager was your best time mm. i mean i've got nothing but praise for john lyle that's for yeah. sure great man great manager great man manager I think any player or coach who worked under John Lyle, there's not one person that's got a bad word to say no, about him. No, no. Uh, he's such a great... He sent me on my path. He was my youth team coach when I was a 15-year-old. Amazing. He asked me back to come part-time as a coach, encouraged me to take up coaching, and employed me as a coach and as a full-time coach. And uh, I've got nothing for... So John was set me on the path. But the day John left... Obviously, you realise suddenly it's you between the eyes. Yeah, I'm on my own now, mm. so I've got to make my career by my choices, by my you know, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I had good times under Bill and Harry. Yeah, um, oh, they were different. Yeah, so different. Um, Harry was good for the club. He was he was a good manager. You know, because he he knew people and he obviously knew the game. Mm. Managers beyond Harry, I think. Not by choice, but you wasn't as inclusive because we started to use split sites. Mm. Chadwell Heath, Little Heath, and now they've got Rush Green, so they've still got split mm. sites. And uh, you're not in day-to-day -day contact with each manager. Yeah. So you're not as intimately involved with the management. Whereas with John Lyle, he used to say to me, for home games, I'll play in the morning with the youth team. I'd go back to Upton Park. I'd go in the little manager's office before the game and speak to Johnny. Go, how'd you go? And how'd it go? Who played well? And mm -hmm. he'd know all the players. Oh, Dad did so and so do it. Yeah, okay. So okay, I've just got to do my team talk. So uh, and he'd go, come and come and sit on the bench with me. So I'd sit on the bench with the first yeah. team. I was only the youth team coach, some green youth team coach. And he'd lean across and go, if you see anything out there, don't be afraid to say it. So occasionally, if I felt confident enough, I'd go, wait, get up. <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, I, did, I didn't do it very often, but very occasionally. So that it. taught me so much. And yeah. I'd be in a dressing room at half time, just Amazing. sitting in the corner, listening, watching the good, the bad, mm. you know, the aggravation, the arguments sometimes. So, you know, I'd learn, I'd be learning all the time. And I learned so much from John. He shaped me, really. Yeah. And, uh, but obviously, each manager, you you learn so much. Mm. Um, you you learn so much from them. So, so much. They're all different. Yeah. Uh, you know, from uh, as they say, H. I can't remember who coming after H. Yeah. 
Or Glen Road, of course, yeah. Glen Road, yeah. You know, and he, he, he tried to include us all because he, he was new to the job and although he had, he had management, he'd never managed you know, to, the, uh, yeah. to that level. So he needed a little bit of help and I, I helped where I could when I was asked. I never pushed myself in that respect. Mm. But if I was asked the question, like the Glenn Johnson question, I'd give an honest answer. And, um, yeah, so I learned of all the managers, but I suppose I was the closest to John, really. Yeah. Harry course. and Bill. I was close to Harry because I knew Harry as a young player. Yeah. He used, he yeah. used to take he used to take me into training. He used to pick me up at Bow Church and uh, take me into training. I was always late and I used to get in so much trouble because <laughs> I was an apprentice. He was a pro. And yeah. Because uh, I used to, I, I had to be there early to do the kit. So Harry was always making me late. Like, oh, Harry, you can't go with him anymore. He's always making you late. And I'm like, oh, dear. <laughs> So he was always getting me into trouble, but because yeah, I knew him from them days. So yeah, and then, then then Roger Cross come in and Frank, and I knew Frank. I played with Frank in the same youth team. Uh, so I, 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 it was good. It was they were good times then because I knew them all. You know, I knew them all as as as, as friends really. Yeah, brilliant. I love it, man. Uh, a few more, then we'll, then we'll let you go and have some rest. Um, how far? Would our scouting network extend for both the youth and senior teams? So, in terms of when you're scouting for youth team players, you know, in your time, was it how far into Europe or you know the, the yeah. world? Um, I have to say, I mean, and I've written it in my book. We've had we've had ups and downs with the youth scouting. Yeah. We've had good good periods when Jimmy Hampson and. Jimmy, yep. Tindall, Jimmy Tindall took charge, come in and shook it all up. Because if you haven't got good scouts bringing in good players, no matter how good a coach you are, you've got to have, the, you've got to have yeah. the raw talent. Mm. And then you shake them, shine them and uh, and guide them and put them in the position you think they're going to be best at. But you've got to have that raw talent come in. And we under Jimmy, I thought we had probably the best period scouting because we at West Ham's main area was East London and Essex. That's where our bulk of our players used to come from. But as youth teams progressed and got bigger and spent more money, and we didn't, they started to encroach in all our areas. You know, that's why the Tony Adams went to Arsenal, Ray Parler, who came from Rodford, went to Arsenal, mm. uh, you know, and they nicking players on our doorstep. So Jimmy come in and revamped that a little bit. We employed more scouts, and we started to put more scouts in South London. You know, and and our, and our haul from South London during that that short period was quite impressive. There was Kieran Richardson, who went on to play for Man United. Yeah. There was Gary Alexander. There was Kevin Horlock. There was Anton Ferdinand. There was Rio Ferdinand. Mm -hmm. And oh, there was two or three more. Mm -hmm. Junior Stanislas. Yeah. South London. And we had three scouts there. Dave Goodwin, uh, Mickey Love. And a guy named um, Paul Senior. And um, for about four or five years, I've done a really, really good job. And for one reason or another, they left. Yeah. Because they wanted to, they wanted bigger, better things. They'd done good jobs for us. We couldn't mm -hmm. offer them full time at that point. So they went off and got jobs elsewhere. And we didn't do enough to keep them. But what we didn't do is we didn't replace the scouts in those areas to do the, do the similar jobs. Gotcha. So after that group of players, I don't remember another player we got from South London. That I really don't think we did. Glenn mm. Johnson came from South London, came from Darford. Mm. Uh, and um, so it was a real fertile area for us. In Europe, we had nobody. Mm. In the north, yeah. where Michael Carrick came from, we had one or two. We had a, a contact or two in Scotland that would, mm. it was just a guy on the end of a phone call rather than actively scouting. Yeah. So, because we didn't, we wouldn't spend the money on it. Yeah, the, yeah. The budget, the budget wasn't there. And I think if I had my, if I could go back in tomorrow, I'm not, this is not a wish list, but if I was, if I went back in tomorrow, I'd seriously look at our scouting network again. Where our, where our players have come from, I want, I'd want a list of every player and where he's come from. In other words, what district, what area. Mm. And then say, right, we need to bulk up in that area. We need to bulk up in this area. And we need to spend, you know, we need to extend our budget. If, you, if, if, if David and the two Davies and Karen would give me another 50,000 a year 
to employ scouts or, or 50,000 for the, for the academy, I'd spend yeah. it on scouting mm. because that's your lifeblood. Mm. So for me, that's one area that we can improve. Yeah. And it's one area that I regret that I didn't improve when I was there. I should have done, but the budget wasn't there. Mm. Yeah, makes per- makes perfect sense. I think I think by by maybe as you said under under the Pellegrini era, it seemed that the scouting network was somewhat. Yeah. It was his, you know, it was, yeah. it was all done on pen and paper by the sounds of it, and then it was yeah. taken away when they left, and the cupboards were bare when Moisey came in. He seems to, he, I think, he has a similar ethos to yourself, Tony, in terms of you know, he seems to be trying to develop that area, as you said, and because as you said, that's a lifeblood, isn't it? That's a lifeblood, but in oh, the right place. A first yeah. team manager, yeah. um, he's going he's to inherit a squad of players, and inevitably he's going to go right. Well, I want to reinforce the team. And yeah. where do they come from? They'll either come from the youth academy if yeah. they're ready, like a Declan Rice. Yep, yeah. he's good enough. Put him in. Ben Johnson will be. He's good enough. Put him in. Or it's the transfer market. Yeah. So if your transfer market is relying on an agent to tell you he's a good player, you're on a wing and a prayer. Yeah. If you haven't, if you haven't got that intimate knowledge about that player. Mm. And what he's like, and, and I admire David. He, he didn't buy players in January, yeah. because the players that were available weren't better than what he had. Mm. So he wouldn't. He didn't go and spend X million just to say, well, I've, I've bought three players in the window," mm. because he didn't believe that they would enhance the squad, and yeah. they'd just be players that played bit parts. And we got mm. one or two of them there still there now, yeah. um, you know, through, through other systems. So yeah. it's it, it, it's um, scouting and having that network of people that give you what you would call honest information uh, is is vital, yeah. vital. Yeah, totally. Um, right, a few more then will be done. Adam says, Tony, you went to school with my mum. I think you used to be a couple. Oh, did we really? <laughs> okay. What's your mum's name? What's your mum's name, Adam? Miss, Mrs. Carl's yeah, not in. She's I'll not in. <laughs> I'd have, to, uh, I'd have to know her name before she got married, of course. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Let us know, Adam. Let us know. Um, right, okay. Uh, Tony, thought, okay, thoughts on West Ham's season this season. Uh, where do you think we're going to finish in the league? And how do you think we're going to do in the Europa League? Oh, yeah. Do you want me West Ham out? Or do you, have West, I got to talk from the West, head? West Ham the hat heart. on. West Ham talk, hat on. Let me talk from the heart. Thank you. Um, I hope we finish sixth. Yeah, I hope, and uh, I'm just I'm I'm very concerned that we're going to fall away a little bit because of our lack of depth in the squad. Yep, and you know we get one or two injuries like with, with Gerard Bowen, we've suffered a little bit. Um, Europa League. Um, my son lives in France, so I'm I'm going to be in France. Oh, here he is! Here he goes. The, the, the second leg, so I'm going to go to the <laughs> Lyon game. Second leg, so awesome. at least I'll be there cheering them on. Um, so we're going to win the Europa League. There, there, there you go. That's you said it. You, you've said it now. You said it now. No, I. I do you know what? Fingers I think lost. we've. Well, I might be funny. Like this year in cups, we've had a really tough. You know, we, in the Carabao, we had City and United. You know, we've, yeah. we've had we've had yeah Southampton, Leeds, Kidderminster was meant to be an easy one, but it wasn't. And they even in are, the no, and even like Sevilla, we've got the you know the second team in La Liga. You got Leon, who are a very good side, and then we'll probably have to play Barcelona in the semis, and then yeah. Rangers in the final. No, I'll be like yeah, nice. the final. Yeah, could that'd you imagine? Nice. Jesus, don't that, stay out of Seville. Uh... The yeah. Sevilla game, the second leg, was was oh. a throwback, wasn't it? Amazing. It was a throwback. The atmosphere, the, the crowd, yeah, were fantastic. I mean, you, uh, yeah. it was. It, I mean, it's one of those. It's one of those games which you know. Hopefully, will be. In, you know, there was there's certain games throughout. You know, West Ham fans' career. I remember that game. Or might be Ipswich in the champ, championship playoffs. That was people talk about that quite a lot. Last game at the bowling, and obviously yeah. you've got the Sevilla game as yeah. I hope. I hope. I hope that sort of is something which people remember now because it's. You know, it's it's um yeah. I think when the teams start performing, it's like the start. Obviously, the whole debate around the stadium and stuff like that. Yeah. But when the teams start performing, it's the last thing that people look at, isn't it? No, if you if you've got a successful team, you'll have a happy stadium because the yeah. fans will be happy. Yeah, simple as. But uh, you know, obviously, the stadium is difficult at times because some of the viewing is you, you're a little bit too far away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, just the ice here ain't great, but yeah, you know, I'm a bit too far away from the far end, but. Um, you know, I enjoy, I enjoy the Sevilla game because the atmosphere and the 
the occasion and what it meant. You and scoring it, first, yeah. you know, lifted the stadium unbelievably. Oh. If Sevilla had scored and, and Fabianski hadn't made that, or not Ar- Arabola Ar- hadn't Ar- made yeah. that save, it, it would have been, it would have made, been a damn squib because, you know, yeah. If they'd have scored first, it'd been over, I think. Oh, Sevilla looked like a shadow of themselves. They looked like they they looked scared. They looked like they just no. just looked like yeah. they, say it shows the intimidating atmosphere it could be when, yeah. when they see the ones yeah, behind definitely. it. So we'll definitely. see. Um, right. Well, uh, one question. I don't know if you keep an eye on the old scouting, but if there's one striker you could sign and bring to West Ham with your West Ham hat on, who would you want to bring into West Ham to play in the first oh, team? Dear. Oh, uh, it's a wish list or. Or, or just someone who might be available. No, oh, a wish so many, list. A, say a wish list. Okay, who'd you, who, yeah. a, or, okay, a realistic wish list. We'll say that. Yeah. Um, I don't know, really. What type? Okay, what type of striker do you think we'd need at West Ham? It's something we've, people talk about. You know, yeah. the need well, of a striker, need of a forward. You know, who do you? You know, I, I, I think, mean, I think we need. I think we need someone with a bit of pace. Yeah. Uh, someone who's good with his back to goal. Yeah. Who can hold the ball up well for players to come and link and run beyond because it's very difficult to get, a pl- get players running beyond the striker if the striker doesn't hold the ball up well yeah because they can't then run beyond as he sets if he sets that's the trigger for forward movement you know my yeah. old third man running favorite practice yeah that rio is used to nick it at me on but uh, <laughs> so i'd want someone who's good with his back to goal could set up and, and and bring people into play, got a good turn of pace and can score goals. It's <coughs> not too much to ask for, is it? Not too much to ask Maybe for. Maybe like so. Marcus Rashford or would he be available? I don't know. Someone like that, you know, yeah. would, would do well. Yeah. Um, players like that, and um, I mean, but there's so many players you could sign and you know, could do great for you, but. Uh, well, maybe, maybe in the summer, maybe Jesse will come and he'll bring Marcus with him. Yeah, exactly. Lingard, but you know, he'd be a, he'd be a great asset to us again. You know, getting the ball running at people, people who can, players that can run at people and take people out of the game, because yeah. then that creates the you know the, the overload, the spare man, Pockets, the two v one or the three v two, whatever, Lovely. which you know can open up the game. And until you got that, you know, the game becomes a bit stale. But it's um, true. It's very true. Very yeah. true. Right, this right, we, we're not going to do uh, right. We're not going to do any more questions. We're just going to have all these lovely comments to you to finish the show. So, Pete John says, "Tony, thank you for your time uh, outside the ground the other day. It was a real honour to meet you. Look forward to buying your book this weekend. So, this weekend, oh, people, this okay. weekend, okay. two p.m. New, new and bookshop or foils on Sunday. Yeah. Good man. There we go. You yeah. see, new and bookshop, <laughs> Look, two sorry p.m. About the plug, lads, but you know. Oh, don't fuck it, Tony. Not being funny. No, <laughs> not being funny. We've got a new new and bookstore." It's, you know, if go go to the bowling and have a pint afterwards, after yeah. you know, reminisce. I was there the other day. I walked Tony seventeen miles the other day for the for the really? food bags. We did it from it was me and uh, John and um, David Sully Junior, the junior boy right. from London State. We went from um, Wembley to London Stadium to the to the bowling. The three statues of Bobby. Oh, fantastic! And, um, yeah, and Viv Viv met us at the fantastic. end from the bookstop. But anyway, so yeah, or foils in the at Westfield at twelve o'clock on Sunday. Tony right. will there yep. and he'll sign your books and uh, all that type of stuff. Um, right, fantastic interview. Thank you all your hard work, Tony, over the years. Um, Thank what, you. Thank what you. time is it? New and books two p.m. two p.m. on Saturday. Two p.m. Yeah. <clears throat> 2 p.m. Saturday. There we go. Um, uh, hi, Tony from Oz, Australia. Thanks for your dedication and work to your service to West Ham. Oh, we're getting all over here, Tony. We've got we've got Canada, we've got Canada, we've got uh, you know they're all over. We loads of different people all over the world. Um, I can still get it on Amazon if they're in Canada. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't worry. Oh, yeah, yeah. We've got we'll put we'll put we'll put the link in. I've got the link as well. You know, I did check, did chat with you. We have got the link. We'll put it in the chat as well. As I said, uh, make sure you, you can do that. You can get it on Amazon or everything. It's in the link in the description um lots of lots of lovely comments man um it's been absolutely brilliant thank you so much tony even with a sore throat it's been absolutely enthralling yeah, I've had a sore man. Throat. Sorry, sorry about a croak in the air it just sounds yeah, th- more thanks for us just, just sounds more yeah. sexy sounds like more like yeah more like barry white so it's all good man <laughs> and uh, that, but it, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh and obviously i uh, hope you enjoy it leon bloody hell that's nice nice yes yeah, so I, 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 I get there yeah yeah, good luck yeah, to you, just going to, we're saying the son lives there, so we're going out for a week to see, to see the grandkids, yeah. Brilliant. I absolutely love it, mate. Look, thank you so much. Loads of things. I'll, I'll kick you out, and then I'll, 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 uh, I'll finish up the show, mate. But honestly, it's been an absolute pleasure. Okay. Thank you so much, Tone. 
Thanks, everybody. I've enjoyed it. Thank you. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Thank you. Oh wow! What what a, what a guest! What a guest! What a legend is is Tony Carr. As I said, we've got um, his book, uh, "A Lifetime in Football at West Ham." It was a lifetime. Forty three years, forty three years he was at West Ham. Um, incredible. And as I said, you know, we you look at some of the players that he's that he has been under him, so to speak. Um, you know, we've had. You know, we've got where is it? It's, you know, Rio. We've had. You know, this is just a few. Lamps, TC, Joey, Carrick, Martin. No, well, this is hundreds and hundreds of Paul Ince, uh, Defoe. You know, Dicko, Kevin Keane, John Terry, Glenn Johnson, Anton, Josh, recent Josh Cullen, Reese Oxford. Absolutely phenomenal, and that's just literally a small smidgen of everyone who's come for the doors. You can just imagine. Right, um, there's a question here about Tony's all-time eleven. Let me just share my screen. This was we did. We've done a Hammers eleven with Tony, and this is his eleven, right? And this is his academy eleven. Check this one out, right? Um, we struggled with the goalkeeper, so we put Stephen in. Stephen's a lovely bloke. We got we had Glenn Johnson. He put Glenn Johnson on the left back because to fit him in. John Terry, Rio Ferdinand, Anton Ferdinand, Kevin Keane, Lampard, Joe Cole, uh, Michael Carrick, Tony Cotty, and Defoe. It was basically, as we said, the 2010 World Cup squad, eight of the squad, I think it was eight, could have been nine maybe, had been through the doors at West Ham. And if you haven't seen it, check out, uh, it's on It's on the playlist. There's a playlist of everyone we've interviewed, all the ex-players on the, on the network, so you can check that out. Lovely guy. We, we spoke a lot, a lot of stuff we spoke about, but a few other bits as well, so feel free to check that out. Um... Listen, I had to, there's so many questions. I had to get through everyone, so I do apologise if I didn't get through it. I tried to get through as many questions as possible. Tried to make sure that people, if they'd had several questions, but we'll, we'll have to get him back on. We'll have to get him back on. Oh, dear. I mean, he's a fascinating man. Absolutely fascinating man. Um, yep, yeah, absolute true gentleman. I'm going to grab that book. What a legend. Thank you. Yep, yeah, do it on Amazon. I believe it's on special. I think it's gone to 17 quid on Amazon. Um, so I don't know what that is in Canadian dollars for Peach. Uh, thank you, Howard. Cheers, 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 everybody. Yeah, we do <laughs> we need a part two. I don't know what we do. I know it's absolutely amazing. Um, that was an incredible team. What in 11? Cheers, Gatesy. Thank you, thank you very much, people. If you're new around here, give it a like, give it a comment, give it a share, give it a bloody good subscribe. Bloody good subscribe. Um, hopefully, I'll try to get as many questions and people on there as possible. It's difficult when there's so many. Literally, we had, uh, I reckon we've had about four times as many questions than we had for the Shaka interview, uh, which just showed. Hopefully, next week, we'll have another X hammer um, but he'll be doing a My Hammers 11. We haven't interviewed him for My Hammers 11 yet, so we'll get him to do a My Hammers 11, and with that, we'll have a little bit of opportunity to do um, um, to do some questions, but make sure you check it out. It'll be a live one, um, and it'll be very poignant because we're going to be playing in Europe, so that's all I'm saying. We're still waiting for him to confirm whether he can do it or not, but anyway, he should be able to do it. Um, if you're around here and you haven't been around here before, welcome. Where the hell have you been? But why don't you hit the subscribe button? Why don't you hit the bell notification? Why don't you like it? If you enjoyed this interview with Tony Carr, the living legend, Mr. Academy, give it a bloody good like this second now. I don't usually do it, but, I've, but I think it was um, he was absolutely phenomenal. And so uh, I will be purchasing the book as well um, because it is um, it's just brilliant. I can just imagine it'd be fantastic. Um, we didn't talk, obviously co cover everything that's in the book because we want you guys to buy it uh, more than anything um, because uh, it deserves. Maybe I'll t I might talk to Tony. Maybe we can get him to do a signing maybe at, um, at the supporters club after one game or something like that as well. I need, I'll need. i have a chat with him now. Exactly. Do it now. Uh, Peach is gobsmacked. And so that's probably the first time ever. Um there we go. So many more clippable moments. I know we're gonna have to go through. We're gonna have to go through and get some of those. Indeed, 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 indeed. Um, tomorrow night. If you enjoyed tonight, you want to come back tomorrow night. We have got Martin Godleyman. We've got Nigel Khan and myself for another appreciation night. We did it on Sir Jeffers a couple of weeks ago. We've done plenty on the old channel as well. Tomorrow we have got uh, the Julian Dix appreciation night. Julian Dix Appreciation Night. That involves going through, talking about Julian's career at West Ham, showing some highlights, showing some clips, listening to Nigel and, and Martin just talk just like 
encyclopedias and it's like two versions of the colony you know, what's, what's the cyclopedias I can't what they're called but it's like it's like that like two encyclopedias talking to themselves um so that's on tomorrow night at 9 p.m um get yourself a cup of tea because it'll go on for a while but yeah and i'll actually be able to join in because I saw Julian Dix play. I never saw Sir Jeff first play, so I felt a little bit out of sorts last week. Last time I did it, but um, we'll be there. So make sure you check that out. It'll be a really good, really good night, really good fun, and uh, you'll see. There's plenty of there's plenty of clips, plenty of goals, plenty of penalties, properly taken penalties. Now this Mamby Pamby Penenka or or little chips or <laughs> and rolls it into the wrong corner proper penalties there are proper penalties and there's a whole reel of them i think i think martin puts about 15 and the, every one of them the keeper ain't got a chance the keeper ain't got it's a how you, how you should take penalties um and why people don't ever take them anymore i don't know i do not know uh just collect the awards now russ what awards what awards are we collecting but i'll have them britannia britannia encyclopedias thank you so much thank you so much also just to mark you got mark your cards um if you're around here and you want to become a channel member um if you hit this join button down somewhere around there you can become a channel member and support the, support the channel that way um we're gonna be as part of the, the the membership um we're gonna be doing monthly um raffles monthly prizes so anyone who's um who is a member um will be eligible to uh, will be entered into a into a prize draw um the first one's going to be a nice one it's be a very good one for the first one but each month there'll be some some uh, some cool uh, stuff we'll be raffling uh, for our members as well as doing members only shows and stuff like that loads of stuff coming up we're back in the premier league on sunday thankfully so in terms of what's coming up next 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 few days um we have a, a daily tomorrow um it's actually going to be quite poignant we're going to follow on from tony obviously spoke about his academy and 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 there's this new wave of academy players coming in and and Moyes has spoken about them uh a few players recently in terms of people he's keeping an eye on so that's what that's going to be the the sort of the lead story for the um for the daily tomorrow uh, we've got hammers headlines tomorrow friday we should have uh will we have a press conference Friday, we should have the presser. Uh, Friday or Saturday, we're going to have the preview show for Everton, dependent on whether um, and what day Anton can do. But we'll have Mikey from, uh, hopefully Mikey from uh, Blue Boys Network. We've had him on before. He's a top bloke. So make sure you check that out. Um, that'd be really good. I'll be at the ground early for a match day morning for those of you who, who are up early on sunday if i get my ass up out, out of bed early i'll be there doing a match day morning um live from the stadium so make sure you check that out and uh, and, and get ready for the game uh, with me and we'll be afterwards we'll be doing the highlight show i'll be joining them from the supporters club i'll also be interviewing the pearly king and pearly queen and i believe the pearly prince of hackney i think they're from hackney um, but they are going to be supporting Iron, supporting Foo Banks and John Bratomsky. They'll be um, shaking their buckets outside the aquatic centre and I'll be interviewing them um, either during the highlight show or as a separate little interview show we'll, we'll put up on the channel later on that day or on Monday or something like that. So loads coming up. And then we're on the road to, to Leon. Uh, it's crazy. And hopefully, I said Tuesday night next week, we should have an ex-hammer, hopefully my hammer's 11 if he's okay with the timing if not we might do a little bit early so make sure the only way you can be sure you don't miss anything is hitting that bell notification that's all you got to do simples simples but anyway guys thank you so much for your time today so much for your questions as i said feel free to check out amazon uh, or waterstones tony's books are now available he'll be at the new and bookstore 2 p.m on saturday if you want to go and meet the man himself um, and then pop into the bowling for a pint that's what it's all right bowling it's not it's not as People said it's been done up. It's, it's all right, but he still has a little bit of the bowling about it. So, um, or go down the Queens, or go down the Queens, relive it, relive it. Um, and then, if not, if you're going to the game, the Everton game, he'll be at Foyle's Bookshop at midday on the Sunday doing a signing as well. So make sure you check that out and, and support the man who basically created modern day West Ham, really, in terms of the youth team, the procession line, all the way from bloody curbs all the way to deck. We'll say, we'll say deck. He signed Dick. If they didn't develop him, he signed him. So that'll do me. That'll do for me. Um, all right, ladies and gentlemen. All right, uh, Claret, Claret and Poo on Sunday. Uh, yeah. Yeah. For, for anyone who didn't go to my, who didn't watch the first one, 
yeah, I have, I'm, a, I'm a regular man, and so I had to cut short the video um, because nature called. Nature claret and poo. Maybe I should call it claret and poo, um, but it's not match day mornings. Anyway, guys, uh, thanks very much. Thanks for all our current um, current what they call members. <laughs> I like to take all of them after every one of my shows. So take care, everyone. Stay safe. Wash those hands. I'll see you at lunchtime tomorrow. Much love. BYA peeps. It's like a family tree All of you